we're going to talk about the supremacy of the word. Last week, we, we talked about the authority, the uh, weapons at our disposal. Today, I want to deal with the supremacy of the word. And I'm mighty afraid I'm not going to finish it up today. But that's all right. We, we got to go somewhere because where we are in time. Say time. Time. Go over to Genesis. This stuff the Lord gave me at my desk this morning, so it wasn't even in my outline. But I got to deal with it. Genesis chapter 3, verse number 1. You do know this is your Bible, right? You have what it says you can have. You can do what it says you can do, but it's inerrant, infallible, incorruptible. Today you will be taught the word of God that will go into the soul of your heart and produce not 30, not 60, but a hundredfold. We decree and declare that your mind is a tent of your heart is receptive. You shall, you must, you will be changed in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody say, he forgot the confession. No, I didn't. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Let's read. Now the serpent Underline serpent, please. Was more crafty. How many know the devil is deceiving? He's sneaky. He don't just come in looking the way you think he's going to come in. He tries to fit in. The, the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, challenging the authority of the word. Watch out for people that challenge the authority of the word. The word is final authority. It doesn't matter what daddy say, mama say, grandmama now. It doesn't matter what the preacher say if they go against the word. The word is final authority. Once the word has said it, that sells it. It's no going around the word. Say the word is final authority. Now we understand over in chapter 2, verse 7, when God formed man out of the um, dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, God gave man a command when he put him in the garden. Don't eat from the tree of what? Oh, no. Knowledge of good and evil. The day you eat from it, you'll surely die. We understand that Adam woke up with presence. You got to visualize this because Adam was a clay man. Yatsar in the Greek, in the Hebrew, to form, to squeeze out of clay as a part of the. He was just a clay man and God breathed into his nostrils. He breathed into his mouth the breath of lies, plural. Because everybody would come out of that body. So it wasn't just life, it was lives. But understand, when God breathed into his nostrils, he breathed the presence into him, God's presence. He was a God man. And then we understand about Eve being taken out of the side, the real form, and we understand they're together, they're fellowshipping with God. And then chapter 3 happens. Say chapter 3. Eve began to have a discourse with the serpent, and the devil, the, the law of double reference means that there's two things going on at the same time. The devil began to talk through the serpent and began to tell her, you won't lose anything if you disobey the word. If you eat from this tree, matter of fact, you're going to gain something. There's a higher level of knowledge that you don't have. And if you partake from this tree, you're going to be like God, knowing good and evil. Well, they were already like God. There was not a higher level of knowledge. There was actually a losing of knowledge. Because when they ate from the forbidden tree, they lost the presence of God. There's a lot going on in this text that most theologians won't touch. They lost the presence of God. The, the presence of God has a lot that comes with it. The, the awareness, the, the power, the revelation... The, the protection, there's a whole lot that comes with the presence of God. What happened, I believe personally, that when they lost the presence of God, they began to be governed by their souls. They begin to be governed by their soul. Man is a three-part being. Man is a spirit. He has a soul that lives in the body. Well, they were being spirit-led. Can I just take my time and teach you? Uh, man, when God breathed into Adam's nostrils, Man was homo pneumaticus, a man after the spirit. Pneuma spirit maticus, homo, not homo sapien, not man after the senses. He was a man after the spirit. Say a man, a man. after the spirit. spirit. Homo pneumaticus. Say that, you can say it. Homo pneumaticus. homo pneumaticus, man of the spirit or after the spirit. Man did not become a homo sapien until he disobeyed God. 
Once he disobeyed God, he had to depend on his sense realm in order to maneuver through life. And when you are void of the Spirit of God, you're depending on your emotions and your sensory realm to maneuver you through life. What, what am I saying? When they disobey God, they lost the presence of God. When you lose the presence of God, you're left up to fend for yourself. People that are void of the presence of God, they make decisions based on how they feel. They make decisions based on counsel that they receive that may not even be godly counsel. And so they have lost the presence of God. So violation of the word equals loss of presence. I'm going to let that soak in. Say that with me. Say loss. I say um, violation, violation of the word, of the word equals, equals a loss of, a loss of presence. When you keep violating the word of God, you're going to lose the presence of God. Well, what does that have to do? Well, we're talking about the word. The word is a weapon. So when you violate the word of God, you're going to lose the presence of God. So you can't fight because you no longer have the weapon of the word. Mm. How many people sitting up in churches every Sunday that's violating the word of God? They're shouting. They're running laps. Some of them even jumping up prophesying. But they have lost the presence of God. So they're moving through their sensory realm. And your sensory realm is the part of you that can be led by the enemy. The enemy gets in your sensory realm. You ever heard people say, that boy ain't got no sense. He's just crazy. Well, if he's led by God, he's not crazy. So if he's doing things that make him appear to be crazy, there's something going on in his sensory realm. So when you violate the word of God, you lose the presence of God. Are y'all okay? Yes. Go to Acts chapter 2. I'm not going to read all these scriptures. I just want to open it up. We understand in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus told them that they would receive power after they went to church. After the Holy Spirit has come, what? Upon them, and that power was for them to sit in the church and smile at the pastor. They would become witnesses. That word witness in the Greek is martyr. If you become a martyr, you'll die to yourself. You will die for the kingdom's sake. So we understand that it was promised in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, that they would receive the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit comes power because the Holy Spirit and power are synonymous. It is impossible to have the Spirit of God and not the power of God. Well, how do you say that? Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So if you have spirit, you have power. That's right. If you're bored of power, it's because you're bored of spirit. Mm. Okay. So we pick up here in chapter 2, verse 1. It says, when the day of Pentecost had come, or fully come, they were all together in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind and they filled the whole house where they were what? Sitting. Sitting. And there appeared unto them tongues as of fire, distributing themselves. And they rested on each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Stop saying people that speak in tongues got a devil. Right. It's Bible. Right. You got a devil for arguing with the word. Tongues ain't for the day. I don't read in my Bible where they were ever for a day. They were for a people that were filled with the Spirit of God because there is a higher realm. And that's why most people never 